I think it'll be a, a major Sarah vibe going on around the Olympics, absolutely. She'll be in, in everyone's, everyone's hearts there. I would not change a single thing she ever did. I wouldn't change a hair on her head. No, she lived her life fully and truthfully and with passion, and, and that is amazing. Sarah Burke was a pioneer. On skis, she did things that made the birds take notice. Sarah Burke was a crusader. She fought to have women's halfpipe recognized as a sport. She was a dreamer too. Even as a kid, she wanted to ski in the Olympics. But Sarah's life was cut short. She died doing what she loved. Sarah's mom, Jan Phelan, still lives and does her art a few blocks away from her daughter's old house in Squamish, BC. It's been two years since Sarah died, and with the Olympics upon us, Jan wants to talk about her daughter's legacy and how Sarah was a fighter from the very beginning. She was only about maybe three, and I was in the kitchen, and I heard this bump, 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 crash. And I, I knew she had fallen down the stairs. Uh, and I was just hoping that she hadn't broken too many bones. And she, I, I ran into the living room, and I, and I stood there and looked at her as she was picking herself up. And she looked up, and she said, I meant to do that. And I saw you going, okay, she's taken several somersaults down the stairs, and, and there she is, but she's not going to let it, she's not going to cry, she's not going to let it defeat her, she's going to own it. Sarah was born into a family of skiers, and it wasn't long before she was bumping down the slopes with her never give up attitude. Then as a teenager, when Sarah took up halfpipe, she looked around and realized she was the only woman in the sport. But there were 23 senior men. So she said, okay, I'll, I'll compete against the senior men. And so she came fourth uh, out of this <laughs> and landed, the, I think, the first 1080 in a competition. So out of all of these men, who many of whom are on, on the World Cup circuit, um, Sarah, this little, little kid, came fourth. So isn't that, isn't that something? <laughs> That's how Sarah first put women's halfpipe on the map. But she didn't stop there. She wrote emails to the X Games, asking them why women couldn't have their own event. She tracked down officials and demanded women be given a chance. For years, she was turned down. She'd be crying in her goggles and venting her frustration. And then she'd say, OK, I'm going to go back and talk to them again. And I could just imagine the tears kind of filling up her goggles because <laughs> she was so mad. Um, because she'd worked so hard at it. Sarah loved the mountains. She moved to BC and married Rory Bushfield, a daredevil skier in his own right. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've had some moments up here with Sarah where <laughs> it was just awesome, awesome times to see her. She really was fearless, you know, she would go for it. Why do you smile when you talk about it? I'm not really sad about it, you know? It's been two years since Sarah passed, and, and I've gone through some super sad times, but everything about Sarah just, you know, it's easy to smile about. Rory remembers Sarah the pioneer. At the X Games, still without an event to compete in, she did tricks in the half pipe before the men's competition to warm up the judges. So they would put Sarah in as the forerunner. And she would kill it. She'd score higher than some of the guys, you know, a lot of the guys in her forerun. And so they started, like, allowing girls. She got, it was a huge progression. She got, she went from nothing to, to getting X Games equal prize money for men and women. It's a huge, huge milestone. She was fighting for, for a pretty, you know, she was fighting for a cause that was, you know, a lot of people couldn't see that. And she did it with grace and with class and, pushed herself in the right places, you know, skied half pipe like a champion, like, did so many first tricks for women that had never been done, you know, and continued to push and continue to push. The Cork 720, Sarah Burke sets the new standard. Finally, in 2005, Sarah broke through. Women's half pipe got a spot in the world championships. Sarah won gold and kept pushing. 
I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the Olympics. We're only going to get better, and I think uh, I'm really hoping to get it in there. So two Canadians finished. Sarah would never make it to the Olympics. On January 19th, 2012, she died after a crash while training in the halfpipe. Her death was mourned by family, friends, and skiers all over the world. But Sarah won her fight. She got her sport into the Olympics. In Sochi, when the women drop into the halfpipe for the first time, Sarah's dream will have come true. I mean, it's thanks to Sarah that all these guys are going to be there. So, and among other things, but but mainly, yeah, and her hard work and 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 her fearlessness. And, so yeah, she's going to be a huge part of the Olympics and be in everyone's hearts there for sure. If you had asked me um, before this happened what the worst thing in my life would be, it would be to lose a child, to lose Sarah. Um, I now know that there is one thing worse, and that would be to never have had her at all, right? So what that... that tells me is that to look at all these wonderful things that she did accomplish and, and to enjoy them, uh, let them bring you happiness. And so it makes sense that Jan will make the trip to Sochi, stand in the half pipe and witness her daughter's legacy. I know Sarah will be there with me. Um, and it's her dream, it's her dream come true. And it's what she worked for in her life. And I do believe she will, she will be there. Her spirit will be there. Nick Purden, CBC News, Squamish, British Columbia.